The world of sailmaking is a complicated one, but every now and then we get an insight. One sails have been around for quite a while, but they've been quite tight-lipped about how they make their sails and why they're different. Until now. They say Prato here in Tuscany is the Manchester of Italy. For hundreds of years, this area has been Italy's textile center. There are around 7,000 businesses based around fashion here. The locals call it the Silicon Valley of textiles. It's a valley where the river Bizenzio provided both the power and the water required for this industry when it was starting up. Today, things are a bit different, but what on earth has this got to do with this? Well, the simple answer is, is that the company that manufactures one sales membranes is based in Prato. But unlike the textiles of the past, Flex and Composites produces a modern, advanced sail membrane. They say their sails are different, but let's face it, every sailmaker says this, and in a part of the sport that is overflowing with acronyms and trade names, it's often difficult to know when you're comparing apples with apples. So, to be honest, it took me a while to get my head around what makes one sails different. When the penny finally dropped, it did so when I thought about how frequently sails used to delaminate. Anyone who's had a mylar sail would have seen how in time it comes apart. UV breaks the mylar down, making it brittle. The mylar cracks and lets moisture in, which fibres like Kevlar really don't like. And while carbon and other fibres might coat better, the resin that holds them together degrades with the moisture. The UV also causes the glue to crystallise and the mylar separates from the rest of the sail. It's not a good look and replacing mylar has been a focus for the sailmaking industry for a while. For one sails, the solution is called 4T, an advanced composite that takes a very different approach. It starts with a material that doesn't break down in UV. This material forms the cross-cut panels into which the shape of the sails is built. From there, the easiest way to think of the production is to think of the sail as a cheese and ham toasty. The sail is built in two halves. The cross-cut panels are the bread. The next stage, which is unique to one sails, is to lay continuous fibres from the three corners of the sail. These are high-performance polyethylene-based fibres, which they call solid stripes, or STR for short. The process that they use to lay the threads is a closely guarded secret, and one of the keys to the production of their sails, so they wouldn't show us this bit. But what they say is that they're the only sailmaker to use continuous fibres on the inside of the composite. The solid stripes are the ham, the business part of the sandwich. During the layout process, a melting matrix is added, a thin film that creates the molecular link between the layers. This is the cheese. Once both sides have been completed, the second half is laid over the top of the first. And just like a cheese and ham toasty, it goes into an oven to be cooked. But in this case, under a vacuum to consolidate the composite. This is another stage that one cells are quite sensitive about, as it's taken over 20 years to develop and refine this process. Essentially, it's a giant vacuum bag with an inflatable bladder underneath to ensure that the laminate takes up its flying shape. The sail is inside the bag and from there the cooking starts, 100 degrees C under vacuum pressure for an hour. After that, it's done. And from there, the membrane then goes to the various one sails lofts to be finished. The STR fibres are not only very stable and not affected by UV, but are impressive structurally too. Weight for weight, STR has the same stretch properties as carbon and they claim that on large maxi sails, for example, they can be up to 40% lighter. That's quite a claim. They also say that in many cases, they can easily be 25% lighter without compromising on strength or durability at all. In fact, they say they've never had a structural failure with a 40 sail since the first one was produced in 2013. That's also quite a statement. So, on that basis, these are very strong and durable sails. In fact, it explains the name. It's not for tea, as us Brits might call it. It's for te, as the Italians say it, which means strong. 
and they're also quite tasty. Is that a bit too cheesy? Sustainability is also a key part of these sales. Because the whole process is based on polyethylene and because it's a heat and pressure process and not a chemical reaction, the material can be recovered, reconstituted and used to make other products. It was this that helped trigger the idea to set up a new sail making company back in 2007. After the finish of the cup in 2007, I was sailing on Mascalzone Latino. I was, during it, I was already thinking about setting up a, a sail making network. And, uh, you know, at the end of it, when I've been helping to close the containers full of old sails, I, I also thought that sailing is considered a green sport, but it, it is not always like that. And so I thought that we should be starting thinking differently and do something that is new, that is looking to a better future. And that's where uh, all our research and our process uh, began. Now, of course, uh, you cannot start the research on the, with the goal in mind of the sustainability. That's the next goal, but the first goal is, of course, performance. And when we talk about sales, the performance is coming out of uh, lightness, longevity, stiffness, all the characteristics that the sail must have. And uh, working with our uh, engineers and especially with uh, uh, Piercarlo Molta, that is the inventor of the new technology, the goal has been first get the best performing product. And then if we can keep an eye on finding the way to, to make it also sustainable, that's the ideal. And finally, after a lot of research, after a lot of work, we could get there. And I have to say that when we launched it, it was in 2013, so 10 years ago, and nobody didn't care about sustainability at the time. So I, I feel kind of proud that we have been kind of uh, being f in the forefront of this area where nowadays, after 10 years, everybody is talking about sustainability and we feel that we are uh, leading this. Someone who has already taken this to heart is round the world sailor Pip Hare. I'm sitting in the middle of one of my jibs in the one sails loft in Suffolk. My main is just on the floor behind me um, and we've just been giving the sails a, a final look over before they get shipped off recycling and this is a really exciting project for us and it's the first time that a set of sails that have been around the world on an Imoka are going to be recycled. Um, we're not sure what we're going to turn them into in the end but we'll, we'll keep you updated on it. But this is all part of our commitment to sustainability. We're constantly looking at ways that we can prolong the life of everything on board the boat, reuse things, recycle things so that all together we create a more sustainable campaign. So when it comes to the sustainability of sales, your sale could end up looking like this. And you could end up with a product looking like this. While creating sales with a smaller carbon footprint has been a key focus for one sales, Looking at the full life cycle analysis, or FCA as it's known, has also been an essential part of the process. The life cycles of the membrane, of the product that we are producing from cradle to grave, is certified as well by third parties, which controls the material we are using, the impact of the raw materials, of the processing, of the energy, and whatever is all included in the analysis of the LCA according to the ISO 14000. We think that it's something that must be taken seriously. That's why we have been through all the official processes, all the certification, all the ISO rules, everything, because it's very easy nowadays to talk about, but between talking and doing, there is a huge difference. Unfortunately, I mean, or luckily for us, there's no one have made a rate of this. So no other producer has a life cycle assessment certified and controlled by third parties. So we can say 
that our membrane are um, in, aver in the average production are emitting from six to seven kilograms of CO2 for kilogram of product that we deliver, but we can we are not able to compare this result with anyone else because no one in this uh, sector have done this kind of study, especially um, uh, certified by third parties. So there's clearly quite a difference in the way that these sales are constructed. Given how complicated the sale making industry has made understanding the difference between various techniques, I think we can all be forgiven for being a bit wary about new claims. Forte does seem to be fundamentally different, but the biggest advantage is the bit you can't see. These are very robust sails. These sails on the 65 footer Hagar 5 are four years old and have done 5,000 racing miles. But what can't be disputed is that as a sport we really do need to do something about the number of sails that we get through. Surely the days of a high performance jib having a life of just a few hours is not something to be proud of. Ultimately recycling sales must surely be the answer. But the reality is that at the moment that's a way off. But using them for something else is a step forward. Sales are, are having one of the hardest life of any item in the world because they are subject to UV, to salt, to wind a lot of stress, uh, misuse. So even the longest uh, lasting sale is uh, as an, an end of life. And so we are taking care of that. But on top of that, I would like to say that already in the production of it, our sales are with, with a very low emission CO2 emissions. But if, you, if we compare it with the normal Dacron sale, that is the basic of sailing, or sail making, uh, we know that we are at least one third lower emission already being a high tech sale compared to the lowest tech sale available. In the meantime, for me, the immediate lesson is that while these sales might look much as you might expect on the outside, on the inside, they're very different.